Hello, everyone. As I'll probably start this proper now, because I get comments and people are like, you didn't start it right. You need to say hello, everyone, at the beginning. Hello, everyone. Uh, apologies in advance for the bright light behind me. It is currently daytime as I'm recording this, and I've got something really, really special to share. Uh, this might not be interesting for anyone but myself, but um, I got into contact with uh, Tristan on stream, and Tristan was somebody who I played World of Warcraft with 20 years ago. And Tristan, <laughs> the mad lad that they are, they saved the very first video that I ever created. A video I did not even remember making. But the moment that I saw it, I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> so today, um, it, for me, it's mainly going to be for, you know, for the sake that it's on internet and it's on YouTube and it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, but maybe we can, you know talk a little bit about it because this is like one of the first times i actually got into the whole content creation thing like one of the first videos that i still have on the channel that are like one of my first ones that is the one in the burning crusade but obviously as every classic player will tell you i started playing wow in classic this here what we're looking at this is my very first character that i've ever made it is called noble and l which you can't see through the pixels but trust me when i say <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what I'm wearing, to be honest. Uh, but it's called Noble and Elm. And as we can see, I got a beautiful add-on for uh, like durability of my armor, for honor kills, I believe, for coordinates. So that's a beautiful add-on. Uh, this is actually the first shot. This is like clean screen, right? Like this is not my proper gaming UI. But here we can see that on the number one button, uh, if YouTube would be kind enough to actually get rid of the player uh, bar. But I, either way... Wait, can I show this better? Oh, okay. So, <laughs> disclaimer. Back in the good old days, YouTube was a lot more flexible when it comes to uh, using copyrighted music. These days, not so much. So, unfortunately, we're going to have to mute it. But, to give you a taste how the video starts, this is the music. And gentlemen, boys and girls, it is my pleasure to introduce to you all... And um, I go around in different settings of the game and I like mimic the sounds of little text bubbles like the finest, the brightest, the meanest, the very best of them all. <laughs> and I went around getting shots in game. Uh, this guild is called Vladrakul. And we used to play on Skull Crusher EU, it was a PvP realm. And for the life of me, I don't remember uh, what guilds I ended up with before. But Vlad Dracul, at some point, was a guild that I joined, and we had a very open policy. We would, we would accept anybody into the guild. It didn't matter, just apply and you would be invited into the guild. Which obviously meant that in the classic sphere, for those that are unaware, you couldn't randomly queue with people. You couldn't server hop. You couldn't go over to a different realm and get your things done. No, 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 no. You were dependent on the other players on the realm. So if your reputation was a bit shit, you were, um, well, you know, <laughs> the realm knew about you and they were like, ew, you're in Vlad cool. I remember that part. Uh, but at the same time, we had so many players and so many lovely people amongst the guild. Like, yes, there were toxic people in there because we accepted everybody, but there were also absolute sweethearts in there. Which was really cool to see. So, uh, let's go back to the first bar. Uh, as you can see, I have auto attack on one. <laughs> I got no keybinds whatsoever. Um, I've got flare on number six. Hunter's mark on seven. Auto shot on nine. As you do. Oh yeah, this was flutter cool. Uh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're going way too quick. We're going way too quick. So, this is my introduction, right? Uh, taking a couple of... Um, scenes here and there to introduce the people and we are called Vlad Dracul which I believe is um, with the whole connection to like Dracula and whatnot which is why this showed up as like Vlad Dracul and, and Vlad Tepish and all that um, this is I wish oh man I wish the pixels had survived the test of time but what you see here is our raid team in Blackwing Lair at Nefarian um, with <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of the screen. <laughs> when I was growing up, okay, I'm very old, yes. And uh, for me, internet was on the rise. I was of the generation that, that grew up with the internet where first we had dial-up and then we had cable and it was great. Uh, but you also had like early websites like Hives, which are like social websites where you could be very creative. And in this case, I made like an animated text to say Raid 1 with like flames behind it and it's not PNG, it's wonderful. Um, and here you can see a collection of the players that we played with, and 
when Tristan came into the chat, I, I mentioned a couple of names that I used to play with. Um, can you see my cursor? You can see my cursor. So this is Beefcake. Uh, Beefcake right here in the middle. Beefcake was our class officer for the Hunters, if I remember right. Beefcake was a really, really nice guy. Uh, took me under his wing. Like, I was, what must I have been, like, 16 at the time? 20 years ago, 16, yeah. Um, I joined the rain team, and back in the day, I had no clue what Moltecore was. I had no clue what they were talking about, what they were doing. I was just happy to be invited and to come along. And so, I joined one of the first raid teams, and we used DKP, and we used the whole system. And they started noticing that I wasn't rolling for any loot. I was joining these raids, I wasn't doing anything. And what happened was one of the other hunters had whispered me. And they were like, Noble, welcome to the raid team. Could you be so kind not to roll on the leaf? Which is the uh, epic bow questline. Like, yeah, sure, I, I don't care. I'm just happy to be here. Could you be so kind not to roll on the helmet and the shoulders and the yada and the yada? And so they would they would whisper me, like, could you just not get any of the loot? And I was like, yeah, sure, I don't care. Until our boy Beefcake found out. <laughs> and the one who whispered me got in huge trouble. And he was like, Noble, you have every right for loot, okay? You play this game 24-7. You have every uh, right to get loot as well. It's like, okay, cool. Um... Beefcake, and that is a story I will save near the end. Uh, eventually, we also did like, uh, and I've told this story on stream before. Um, maybe I should keep it out of this video because it's mm, maybe, maybe it's like a second part. Anyways, um, yeah, we're gonna keep that out. What I will say is that at some point we had a, a competition. And there was a competition in order to gain access to the Burning Crusade beta. And we had a character in the in the in the guilds. Um, I think Tristan mentioned their name. Hang on, let me look it up. Okay, I, I can't directly find it, so it doesn't matter. Um, but we, we entered the screenshot because the NPC in the game had the same name as the player, and so we would get around, or they would, I missed out on this, um, because by that time I had like had my fill of classic. But they get around on the character and actually won the competition, so they handed out a key in order to test the Burning Crusade, but that was on Beefcake's account, right? Uh, next to Beefcake, we see, I believe this is Bupi, uh, Bupi is a character that I always keep in mind, like, they were a gnome with pink pigtails, but they were, like, our off-tank. And in my mind, that was always, like, it stuck around. I'm pretty sure that I made a couple of characters in their honor. Then we got AJ, who was, like, our raid leader. And later, we'll pop in and we can actually see, uh, me helping out with the raid leading and whatnot. Um, but I made a character in the name of AJ afterwards. And there's, there are more names in there, like, I think Tia is here. Tia rings a bell. Um, but I wish, I wish the quality was better. You could actually see, like, okay, these are the names that are in there. I think this is me in the background, but I'm not sure. Somewhere in here. Uh, so that's kind of cool. I wanted to say something else, but I don't remember now. Let's just keep on going, shall we? So, the, the way that I made this video is I wanted to, like, it's a Raid 1 promo video. So I wanted to promote what kind of Raiders we had and what kind of people were in the guild. And for me, the Smurfs <laughs> became the gnomes. Listen, right? Listen. Oh my god. And here we, we, we do see a bit more. Like, this is Swirl. This is Tuxtux. Uh, this is one of those names that always stuck around for me as well. Because um, Tuxtux was a fellow Dutchie. We actually met up, I believe, uh, way back when. So this was a mage in the guild. Uh, I rolled alts, by the way, in Classic. That's the amount of time that I played uh, Classic while I rolled alts. Uh, for those unaware, completely unaware, like, I used to play this game religiously 24-7 for, like, a year. I was incredibly addicted to World of Warcraft and Classic. Uh, thankfully I got over that, but it was not exactly uh, a healthy, good time. Like, I would wake up at, like, 3 in the afternoon, I would play until, like, 6 at, uh, in the morning. Um, I would do nothing but play WoW, and that as a developing young man at that, that ripe age was not exactly good. Now, I landed on my feet, thankfully, I got very lucky, but would not recommend. Uh, you, you did build up relationships, though. <laughs> you did get to meet people that actually stick to your mind after so many years. Because, like I said, when they showed up in stream and they were like, do you, uh, do you remember, like, Vlad Raku and this realm and whatnot? Like, Cynthia also... Cynthia is stuck in my mind. And I don't know if they're the ones that I'm thinking about. Like, Cynthia... I think I was close to Cynthia at some point. Same with Calimero, uh, Calimero except called Myreo that they're called. Uh, here's Bupi. Bupi, way. <laughs> I'll never forget Bupi. Holy crap. 
the area. And I believe the area was one of two brothers that had a shop in the Netherlands as well. Um, of course, a gnome on a tiger with the whole reputation thing, right? But you got to keep in mind, like, this is 20 years ago. And some of these minds, some of these names still stick in my mind. Some of these people, I can still recall, like, this is who they were. This is what their life was at 20 years ago, yeah? Here we go. What song do you think we use for the Night Elves? That's right. Oh, that is very much DMCA. <laughs> it's close to midnight and the rogue are coming from the water. Um, on the Amongst the Night Elves, we of course have a plenty of rogues amongst the crew. Uh, I recall back in the day, I wasn't really familiar with how WoW worked, as you can imagine. And uh, I didn't really know that you needed to go for, like, agility or for intellect or whatever. Nah, nah, nah. In my mind, I was going to go for armor points. So what happened was I had a rogue buddy. I think they were called Sujuro, something like that. Um, and we would level up and we would have a competition. Who could get the most armor points? Not agility, not attack power, whatever. Armor points. So at some point, as, as a hunter, you hit level 40 and you get mill. And so obviously, Tia as well. I believe Tia was, like very close and very kind that that's how i remember them um but at some point as a hunter you get mill so your armor becomes incredibly high and i was like haha i've won and and the rogue went like yeah but what about your agility though and i'm like what do you mean agility i had no stats i had just nothing i had nothing but armor points on my gear oh oh whoa 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 what was that what what are we looking at? Whoa, hang on. This is me. Obviously, I can't be in the movie. So, I have a bear. Why? <laughs> oh, I know why. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. So, uh, unfortunately, I can't read this text. Maybe if I make the screen a bit smaller, I will in a second. But, I have a bear. And I know what I had a bear. So, when I got into WoW, uh, I've been playing Star Wars Galaxies with a friend of mine over the summer. Serio... Doesn't play WoW at the moment, but we used to play all the time, all together. And um, at first I was like, you know what? I don't know if I want to play more World of Warcraft. I don't know if I want to spend another summer playing a MMORPG, right? Like, I don't want to invest that much time because Star Wars Galaxies devoured our life for a bit. Uh, 20 years later, <laughs> the story has been told. Uh, but the way that I got into WoW was I, I had no clue about Warcraft 1, 2, or 3. No clue about Blizzard Entertainment. Uh, buddy of mine, Serio... Uh, his father had like a couple of computers at home and he had like a home network like he had a couple of brothers His father was very much into IT and computers They were one of the first home networks that I've ever encountered So we would play like Starcraft together or I would watch him play Diablo and stuff like that go to the secret cow level Regardless, he shows me the classic cutscene and I remember like it was yesterday I saw the dwarf on the mountain with his bear and uh, apparently that's Magni no, doesn't matter and um in my mind, I was like, okay, this looks really cool. I want to check it out. But if I'm going to play this, I want to play a hunter with a bear. Because I saw in that trailer that the enemy had to deal with my pets before they could reach me, right? Like the torrent smashes the bear out of the way. And I was like, that's a huge advantage. That's how I want to play. Even back then, I was a sweaty, right? <laughs> so I look at the logging screen and I look at the characters, how you can make them. And I notice that... Night Elves get a uh, benefit, Night Elves get a, a passive bonus. If they die, they'll move faster in Wisp form. That was one of their benefits. And I was like, that sounds cool. Like, if I die, which I'm going to assume I'm going to be doing a lot, um, that's going to be, you know, easy for me to get back to whatever I need to be. And then we could keep on playing. I thought it was going to be a huge benefit, right? Like, little did I know. Uh, but I still held on to the dream of I want to play with a bear, regardless if it's a tanking pad, regardless if it does DPS or whatnot. I wasn't, I wasn't into that. Look, I got auto attack on my number one button, okay? <laughs> I wasn't exactly caring about the numbers, it was classic. Um, so yeah, I made a night elf and I started playing the game and my the friend, Sirio, he made a human mage. And you might already recognize what the problem is here. Night Elves start in Teldras Hill, Human Mages start in Stormwind. So we were continents apart and we weren't playing together. It's like, okay. So I try WoW and I tried for like five minutes and, well, I thought to myself, this game is absolute trash. And so I turned it off. But somewhere in the back of my mind, I was like, huh, maybe I should give it a bit of more of a try. You know, you bought the game, you bought the description, you might as well. 
uh, which was also a big thing, by the way. Paying monthly to play your game. What? What are you talking about? Um, that was a bit of a thing. So, I log in again, and I would play for an hour, and then I got bored. And then I log again, I, got, I played for two hours, and I was like, okay. And that kind of started to snowball. Like, classic WoW, especially in its first iteration. I, I can't speak for anybody joining WoW right now, but especially back then, classic WoW was like cocaine to me. Like, that was, oh... I could not get enough, never enough. I also see, by the way, in the background that the quest line is actually popping off. Um, I need to do this quest line. Let me see if I can actually get it done this time because it bugged out. Um, as I can finish up my story. So eventually I get hooked on playing Classic WoW. And obviously at some point I want to play with a buddy of mine. And my buddy started leveling. I was killing crabs in Darkshore. You know, we were getting places. And at some point he shows up and he's like, look. If you want to play together, I need to bring you to where I am, because otherwise we're not going to be doing anything. And he escorted us on the famous Wetlands Run. Which means that he showed up and uh, he guided us through Wetlands. We were low level, so crocodiles were killing us from left and right. He brought us across the Wetlands into new territories. And I can still recall sitting behind my PC... And at this point in time, I've seen nothing but the shiny purple area of the Night Elves, right? I've only seen the Night Elf area with their trees and with whatnot. Going around the corner and realizing that this game had snow made me realize how huge this game was, how huge this world was. It was mind-blowing to me that there was this whole city, a whole new area, new races to play with. Like, well, I, I hadn't seen these people before. What do you mean? Uh, um... Yeah, that was, that was mind-blowing to me, it was shattering. And of course, that's where the bears were, right? Like, we had bears in Darkshore, but they weren't the bears. I okay, now I'm trying to remember. Now I don't need to... I think he was running with the white bear. I don't know, because the white bears were winter spring. Either way, you know, there were bears to had there. So I was picking up the bears, and then, of course, a hearthstone. And I was like, oh, no! <laughs> I forgot to pick up fly puffs, and I forgot to set my hearthstone to a different place. And it's like, okay, don't worry about it. I don't want to don't do another wetlands run. I'll just stay here now. Um, so that was fine. But yeah, what a trip. And uh, as, as, the, as the little newbie that I was, uh, especially at the beginning, like one thing that I'll, I'll remember forever is that... You know how people say that our community got toxic over time? And how they have like this beautiful fantasy in mind about how sweet and nice everybody was back in the day. Well, I'm here to tell you that was not the case. Um, I remember asking in chat, look, I got my pet, and my pet's getting unhappy, how am I supposed to keep my pet happy? And instead of somebody just being kind enough to explain how, like, the whole feeding system worked, right? For those that don't know, back in the day, you had to feed your pet to keep them happy, otherwise they would run away. No! <laughs> I was told to t target my pet, yeah, and type slash pet, emote slash pet on my pet and that would keep it happy i'll never forget the day that my spider ran away and i was like this is not working it's not doing anything and the spider ran away i didn't know i had to get like different foods to feed it okay but it's still it's <laughs> it's one of those stories that just keep cracking me up uh i've honestly been thinking about doing like a um, 20 years of warcraft kind of story video uh what the heck is happening here hello Okay, sorry, I got messages in the middle of my reaction, and I got distracted. I'll cut this out, you'll never notice that it happens. Um, okay, so looking at the video, we got Cynthia, Genevieve, Tristan, and... Can I make this smaller so I can actually read this? Hang on. Don't know. Huh. Um, and in the button section, we've got... Volley, obviously. Like, I, uh, for for reference, if you're wondering like, how are these buttons set up, I clicked my spells. I nearly clicked on everything. And yes, you can get away with that in Classic. You can even get away with it in current day. Um, it's just not optimal, right? Uh, but what I'm seeing is like I got Volley. I got Aspect of the Cheetah. That's my Shadow Melt. Obviously, Shadow Melt's aim shot was phenomenal. Uh, that was, I think, you would reflect damage, explosive trap, multi shots, ment pet, res pets, flame trap, call pets, uh, aura, another trap, rapid fire, uh, distracting shot or tranquil shot? No, this is distracting shot. Tranquil shot had a um, different icon, I think. Uh, trap, engineering, track humanoids, bandage, fear beast, because, you know, PvPing, we got a fear beast. 
eyes of the beast, different bows. Now you might wonder, why would you put different bows on the bar, right? I didn't roll with a lot of add-ons. Apparently I did have add-ons, which is kind of surprising now that I'm looking at it. I thought I always played like without add-ons, but in the Nefari and Blackwing Lair fight, what he would do is for the hunters, he would break your bow. <laughs> so you would have to equip a shittier bow, have that one break and then equip your proper bow again, uh, which I'm pretty sure these macros are for. Aspect of the pack, disengage, food and water, different shoulder pads. I'm not exactly sure why I was swapping my shoulder pads out. Huh. Maybe mana regen? Maybe. Uh, trinkets. I believe that's the one for UBRS, I think. Engineer trinkets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I rolled engineering because that would give you fire resistance. 100%. And that fire resistance was needed for Molto Core. <laughs> I was told that you needed like 500 fire resistance to do Ragnaros. Like, I'll get 500 fire resistance. I don't know if that was the number, but you know what I mean. Uh, carrot on a stick, Argent Dawn reputation. That was the uh, Scolo Ghost trinket, I think. This was fire resistance trinket. I know that much. This is equipped, so I can't really tell. Of course, we are rocking Rokdalar. Yeah, I was well proud of getting Rokdalar. Um, I mean, those buttons are still the same. I got a Halloween bag, I guess. I was well proud. So, wait, what, what song did I give myself here then? The girl. Yep, DMCA. <laughs> Boys Master, Light Guard, Tia. Oh, God. Tornar. Get out of the way, out of the way. Casano, Cynthia, Landis. Like, you gotta ask your guildies, like, hey, can y'all sit around and just dance for me, kitties? <laughs> oh, man, I'm working on a video. Generalu. I think Generalu was one of the people that I did the competition with. I think. Shijuro and Generalo, I think. Okay, so I can't read their name. But my brain just fired off a memory. <laughs> okay. You know how in Season of Discovery, these days, we've got melee hunters. They can actually pick up melee weapons and deal a huge amount of damage. Well, they didn't come out of nowhere. Back in my day, there were hunters who believed that they should be melee hunters as well. And I had a hunter in our guild who got like the melee weapons for UBRS, which upset a lot of people. <laughs> and he was like, Noble, I don't get it. Everybody is so mad and I can use these weapons. Why wasn't I allowed to pick them up? And it's like, yeah, <laughs> hey, you want a melee? You melee, buddy. With your dragon stalker pads. I don't know if it was that person, by the way. Liriel. Oh, lordy. Uh-huh. Oh, that was going to be my closing shot. Then, nope. Nope, definitely not my closing shot. <laughs> uh, what the fuck? <laughs> Why? Why did I use this shot as humans? Definitely DMCA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, white priests. So I was talking about this and we were discussing it as well. And I was talking with, um, hang on. I need to mute something. I've been tagged into things and it's happening all over the place. I was talking with Tristan about this and uh, we don't know the exact details anymore, but this is, this is juicy drama time. I've actually considered sending this into Mike at one point. Uh, but F it, I got my own channel. <laughs> Let me do uh, drama time. <clears throat> Hola ballers and a brofist to you all. Welcome. Now, I don't know. I don't know who did what. I don't know their names anymore. So we're just going to let it play out, right? It was in the human category. And back in the day, we had, if I remember right, a warlock boyfriend and a rogue girlfriend. And the warlock was a bit of um well i um it's gonna go up on the youtube so let's just say that the warlock was a bit warlocks had a reputation okay if you rolled warlock your character was most likely going to be warlock ish is that fair that's fair and the warlock boyfriend was with the rogue girlfriend and i believe that the rogue girlfriend was like pregnant at the time or whatever and there was this whole drama going around. Oh, there's Adon. That's the character. That's the NPC. We, we hovered around Adon and we take the screenshot. Um, but there was this whole drama going around because 
there was like a, a third party involved with the boy and the girl and the boy did not like that and the girl was like oh my god drama 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 and eventually at the end of the day the girl ended up with one of our priests <laughs> and then if I remember right, there was like the whole um, throwing in windows, like literally going to each other's houses and like throwing in the window. Now, if you were part of Vlad the Cool and you know details of this story, by all means, let me know in the comments down below because I forgot about it. Now, you might say, whoa, that's messed up. AJ, by the way, I believe it was AJ with the gnome brother who had a shop in the Netherlands. And um, AJ was like a raid leader, which was kind of sick. Hi, Guinevere. Um... I was thinking it's Serio, but it's not Serio, it looks like it. So, uh, they ended up together. You might say, well, that's really messed up, right? Like, relationships breaking over each other and people meeting each other and this, this kind of stuff happening. Um, this was more common than you would imagine. Like, people would play a lot of WoW, and during a lot of downtime, as you did have very little to do, people would talk to each other and get to know each other. I know of a story that happened later in which I used to run into a party and we used to run Sunken Temple all the time and we had like a warrior tank. And the warrior tank got involved with uh, a member of our party who the warrior tank believed was a girl. And I knew that they weren't a girl. Almost everybody knew that they weren't a girl, but the warrior tank did not. And so I, I spoke to the not girl and I was like, you need to be honest about this. Like, I don't know what you're doing with him, but this is going pretty far because the warrior tank... <laughs> was married <laughs> and they had taken it into real life like they had started sending each other's letters and whatnot and they got to the part where yeah you know you know how it goes online right so eventually the wife of the warrior finds out and she gives him a choice either you stop playing wow or we're done and luckily wisely he stopped playing wow but again um wasn't that uncommon so here we got the five dwarfs. Oh god, do I want to know what song I used? Is it in the mine? It's in the mine from Snow White. Holy... I played this song the other day on stream. Alright, that's creepy. Cool. Um, so yeah, those, those... Like, there's a reason why Batuzai, my lordy... There's Beefcake, of course. Quentin. Uh, like, there's a reason why drama time is such a thing. Like, people interact with each other, and where people interact, like, how many times has it not been guild drama? Um, just the other day, I joined a guild in Season of Discovery where one person said something wrong, and they thought they had, like, friends among them, but then the friends were like, yeah, we're just playing WoW together. Um, drama happens, yes. Look at me giving giving little spot in Dire Mall. Slasher all the way coming to Dire Mall and let me record a little shot for you. This, I believe, is recorded on Fraps, by the way. Uh, it, these days I use OBS for recording, but back in the day I used Fraps, I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm, and, and as you can see, even back then the quality is high. There were a lot of channels out there that... Um, I don't know why I don't see Beefcake's name. Does that mean Beefcake made his own recordings? Maybe he did. I don't know. Um, but back in the day, you always had those recordings like made with GameCam 2.0. Yeah, I knew how to pirate stuff. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't say that. I'm gonna have to edit so much. <laughs> Makrudin. Hey! What the hell? No! Do it or need? God, this is, this is taking me back in time, though. Like, I completely forgot that I've made this. Oh, that was the end. Oh, okay. But thankfully, we do have more videos. Um, like, this was... This is literally the, the very first video that I ever made. Like, I'm well happy that this still exists. Because it was erased from my memory. That's how far we've gone. Um... But there's more. They, they got more recordings, which just makes me very happy. Um, let me grab it. Here we got us raiding Blackwing Lair. So for me, for my, for my gameplay um, adventures, so to give you like context, um, I played Classic WoW a lot. But as you probably have already summarized, I wasn't exactly great at the game. Not that I am right now, but you know what I mean. Uh, eventually, I got into the guild where we did like multi core raids and Onyxia raids and Blackwing Lair raids. And like I said, I played WoW religiously for 24 7. But eventually, you know, 
there was more to life than playing WoW, I suppose, and I had to get out of it. I had to step up and like get things in order, and thankfully I managed to do so. Um, as well as in WoW, I, I got to the point where I'm like, you know what, I've done the Black Lair thing. I believe that they did uh, Zoogroup after that, which I poked a little bit at, if I remember right, but could be misremembering. And then Ankirage, and with Ankirage, I was like, nah, I'm done. I don't want to get the uh, books and the trinkets and the spells. I, I don't want to do AQ. And especially with Nux, I never got into Nux Ramas either. Uh, as I mentioned before, we won the competition to check out the Burning Crusade beta. And potentially my mistake, but I just checked out Hellfire Peninsula. And again, I wasn't aware of the lore. I wasn't aware of the whole opening of the Dark Portal or Illidan Warcraft 3. I knew nothing about that. That didn't start until uh, Wrath the Lich King. Um, but I looked at Hellfire Peninsula and I was like, this is gross. This is just ugly. I don't like this. And I'm giving up my hard-earned epics for greens. Ew! So I decided to stop playing from there. And, uh, yeah. But this, uh, this is Blackwing Lair. And we had a wonderful tactic in Blackwing Lair. Does it have music? Oh, yeah! I don't know if it's copyrighted or not. So... We had a system in which we had an officer for the classes, and I'm pretty sure that at some point I became an officer for the class as well, but mainly not because I was good at it, but mainly because I was just always there. And I like telling people what to do. That part of me has not changed even a little. Uh, and as you can see on the top left, we got Batusai, Brugabrug, me, Litiel, and Beefcake as like the hunter party rolling up. And as I said, Beefcake was one of the sweetest people uh, that you can imagine. Apparently there still are, if I gotta believe Tristan. Um... The last time how you were playing? All right, AJ. So AJ, um, I've mentioned this before. I, when I raid, like over the course of playing WoW, I have raided from time to time. I think the Burning Crusade is the only real time where I did not raid whatsoever. Uh, but over the years I've raided, I've been a raid leader. Uh, I've made video guides, I have trained tanks, like I've played WoW for 20 years, I kind of know how the game works, not on a max level, but I know plenty about the game. Um, but I, I have no self-control when it comes to World of Warcraft, or in many cases I find myself like I'm going either all in or not at all, right? So what happens if, if I start raiding is I can't just micromanage my raiding. I can't do it in small bursts. If I raid, that means I got to get maximum gear. I got to sim myself. I got to get potions. I got to get all the reputations. I got to do this, got to do that. I can't just show up for raid and be like, yeah, we're raiding now. No, 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 no. I need to do the best that I can. And while I have 100% accepted that I will never be a top tier player, right? It's just not in me. Uh, I will try to do the best that I can. And you, listening to this, might say like, oh yeah, yeah, I mean, that's normal, right? Like going to the raid and doing that kind of shit, but it's not normal for everybody. I've had people in my raid teams that found it toxic that they had to bring uh, pre-pots and flasks and food. They had the arguments that they were the ones who paid for their subscription, and therefore we had no right to demand of them whatsoever. Same with like signing up for the guild website or for uh, signing up for the raid calendar. Like I've met a lot of people throughout the years. Um... But this is kind of where it all began, like, you know, this is where we started. And we had a uh, tactic for Blackwing Lair where, um, like, these days, if you would play Classic, which is still mind-blowing to me, but these days, if people go into Classic, into Blackwing Lair, they'll just blow up the ads and they'll just kill the ads as they come in. The damage output that they have is way higher than what we were able to do. So our tactics was different. We decided that the ads were going to be ignored, and we were going to kite the ads in circles around the room. <laughs> so, while in this fight, for those who have never seen the fight before, the idea is you clear the trash at the start, right? Like, you clear uh, the controllers. The actual boss is then released, but you retake control of the boss. And the idea is that you go around the room and you cleanse the X before engaging the dragon. Uh, if you fight the dragon and kill him before uh, the X are cleansed, he will detonate and you will wipe no matter what. Um, so you need to clear the room before doing it. And as you do so, more of the Blackwing guards come up and, and the X tenders and whatnot, they show up and they're like, hey, uh, we're here to party. Now, you could use the boss to wipe at the, or to slice at the ads as well and help out with DPS, but mainly you wanted to focus it on 
uh, cleaning out the X. So a couple of ads in there. I think it was the big dragon elites. We decided that the hunters were going to pull those out and then run around the room with headless chickens <laughs> and just keep the ads occupied. That way the rest of the DPS could focus on the orcs and all that and we could just keep things going. Now, at some point, because this has been pre-watched, uh, at some point in the raid, I um, type out like what druids didn't understand, you're not allowed to sleep them. Now, the druids were on point, like you could just sleep the dragons and CC them and you don't have to kite them around, but usually what happens is like the CC would run out and uh, a hunter would tag them and an aggro would go out of control, blah blah blah. So we would make it a point, like druids, don't sleep the ads. And at some point one of the druids does and I get pissed. <laughs> and I'm like, 20 years ago, not a lot has changed. As we can see with Beefcake screen as well, they got like the whole bow switching thing going on. They got beautiful tiger icons. They got a clean, sleek UI. Mm. <laughs> Very pretty. It's so, so cool to see where you were. So here we go. Beefcake is in action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, um, they're running with aspect of the monkey on. Oh, here I am, here I am. What druid didn't get the message? Don't sleep, girl. <laughs> still with aspect of the monkey, um, still running around like nobody's business. Big old packs. Uh, if you look over on my health, I am about a quarter in. I'm also running without aspect of the cheetah or aspect of the pack. I mean, you wouldn't use aspect of the pack here, I suppose. I'm using aspect of the hawk. I'm not exactly sure what my gameplay tactic is there. Am I just not kiting right now? Is that what's happening? Am I just DPSing? That could be a thing. This could be a run where I was no longer needed. Uh, oh, oh, we're definitely dazed. Oh, 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 beefcake in a little bit of trouble. Use the turrets in order to not take any more damage. Use the healing post to keep it up. Here he goes, back at it again. Still with aspect of the monkey. Keep on going, baby. Did you use... Um... Did you use something there? I don't know. I'm using Aspect of the Hawk. I'm not exactly sure why. Huh. Like, be monkey makes sense. Monkey increases your chance that you can dodge something. Hawk increases your ranged damage, if I remember right. Hmm. Maybe I'm just shooting things at this point. Could be. So here, we've cleaned out all the eggs. And as you can tell, the ads run away once you clean all the eggs. So at this point, you need to drop all aggro. You let to do your tanks do their thing. Uh, the dragon likes to do AoE stunning and whatnot. Uh, oh. Wait, wait, wait. Whoa. Hang on. Go back in. Whoa, look at that. Dragon stalker helmets. Giant stalker gear. Oh, my camera died. Oh, neat. There we go. Hi, camera. Welcome back. Cause I'm blue, da ba dee da ba die. Um, voila. That's better. Um, so a mix of Giant Stalker, Dragon Stalker, Rokdalar, and using the epic sidebow. Not actually using Rokdalar longbow of the Ancients. Is that the freezing ring? Is that the epic, if you get touched, the mob will get frozen ring? What's a dire mall? I don't remember. I wish I wish we could see like reputation tab and whatnot. Guildmaster. Oh, you were actually the Guildmaster Beefcake. Really? Oh, that's why he's sticking my mind. Oh, I see. Alright, here we go into the metal setting. Uh I'm trying to see if I can see myself around here somewhere. Oh, I'm the right there on the right. That's me. That's me. I'm on the right. Oh, let's go. Shoot, Noble. Shoot him. You can do it. <laughs> Run away. <laughs> Wait, what am I doing? Feign deafing and drinking? Am I out of mana? Or am I, am I not that? Who is that? Wait, what am I doing? Wait, what? How? What hell? That... Does that not say Noble and L? Oh, that might be someone else's name then. Someone whose frames like... Oh, no, it's me. Oh, no, 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 no. It's 100% me because I can see on the left side that I've died for a little bit. I come... I'm, I'm eating because my health dropped. Oh. And then the healers did a bit of a thing. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Feign deafing out of combat. Sheesh. Water pro. 
I also mastered the skill of trapping mobs in combat. Yeah. I learned how to feign death and CC mobs mid combat. Yeah. Pro strategies. <laughs> Here we go, back in it. We can finally drop some sick damage right now. As you can see, we are optimizing the amount of dots that we can put on the boss by having a minimum of four hunters and only two serpent stings. Now, this might be the time where we figured out, like, okay, there's only X amount of debuffs that you can actually put on the boss. And so we should be... Nope. Nope, definitely not. Uh, we are just not that good at keeping up Serpent Sting. That's fine. <laughs> we'll learn. Uh, I think the blue icon next to Thunderstrike, so the top left, the second one, I think that's one where you get like mana back if you hit the boss. And then a bunch of Warlock Curses in there. Even a Druid debuff, I think. Oh, man. Look at this fight. Come on, mages. Oh, here we go, here we go. We can nuke. Go loose. Hey, AJ's on the job. <laughs> Look at now we can unleash. Ah, I see. We're just holding back. You know, aggro. We were holding back. God, this takes me back. And then... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Wait, what was that? Go out. What's wrong? What? Oh, go out! What is wrong with you? <laughs> this nerdy DPS. <laughs> See, I learned from the best how to raid lead, okay? <laughs> uh, uh, um. I'm trying to imagine what kind of PC I was playing on. I think I got a picture of myself back in the day. Uh, I'll edit it in if I can. I can show you what my setup was. Eventually, I moved over to a laptop. Like, one of my first lore videos of my guides, my solo guides, were in the direction of made on my laptop. Uh, but on this, I still played on the PC that we had at home. Like, we had one family PC, and I just kind of... I kind of took that. <laughs> Eventually, we got a second PC, because I just never would, to, uh, would move from the one. And this one was just either you kill the boss, or the boss kills you. Moshu. Oh, what a names. Nido. I mean, this one, I think this one is just blasting, where you just pop off your cooldowns with the debuff on, and you just hope that you get him down. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Here we go. Look at all those serpent stings. Nice job, hunters. Nice job. Oh, the turnaround. <laughs> Bit of a scary moment right there on the 1%. Ah, we got him. Ooh, good job. And we got one more. But I don't, I don't think that one is particularly interesting. It's a ganking video. Um, which is over here. I mean, it's again from Beefcake's perspective, right? Ganking level 37s in Stranglethornville. You know, not much has changed. In Season of Discovery, this is exactly what I did. <laughs> um, and we need the Horde. Where are they? As I type in, in general chat. Uh, I'm just looking at the messages, to be honest. So here, uh, for some reason, I had a macro that said for the Horde, which was interesting. I'm pretty sure that they couldn't read what we were saying anyways. Oh, those poor level 37s, by the way. Can you imagine a pack of 4 to 5 level 60s that are just... I mean, you don't have to imagine. If you play back in the day, that's exactly how it went. Yeah, we had to do something. We played on the PvP realm. Let's go. Pain keep? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Just ganking people. <laughs> Plague lands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there was definitely something to be said about playing in a PP realm. Like, eventually I got bored with it uh, because of the whole ganking thing. And after playing on Skullcrusher EU, I moved over to uh, PvE realms just for a more chill experience. Uh, but definitely on Season of Discovery, like, this added just a lot of stuff to do once you've done your regular endgame. Like, once you've done your raiding and whatnot, then it's, it was fun to be ganking. These days, though, it's interesting how World PvP has kind of changed with um, being able to swap in and out so easily. And the only real time that we now have World PvP is when leveling, I guess. Like, even, even if you do get large-scale battles, uh, the game can't really handle it anymore because there's too much happening in the background.
Mm. And apparently I wasn't having a good night. Apparently I was not having a good night. Vent wasn't working. I was flying. It, was, it wasn't a good time. Oh my god. Vlad Hunt. Yeah, we had a, a chat room for the hunters. Huh? Grappig. Silifus. Yeah, Ankiraj time. Where eventually we got like the cultist with the uh, papers that we had to gather. Or like the outfits, I think it was. And then with the outfits, you could summon like bigger bosses or whatnot. I'm apparently calling someone a schatje. I'm not sure why. Um, say hello to my little friends. Oh god, what are we doing? Right, we could better turn this off, huh? Um... But yeah, this was um, this was a blast in the past. Not gonna lie, like it's it's. I might sit down and do like twenty years of Warcraft and come up with some stories along the way. Um, but it's kind of crazy how how fast time has gone and how much the game has changed over the years. But that you can still, after so many years, like people often ask, like, why do you play WoW? What do you remember most fondly? Uh, but usually it's the names that are attached to what you were doing back in the day. Um, and obviously, uh, with dramatic stories, there will always be names that are like less positive and less positive experiences, but also just wonderful people that you come across 20 years later and like, hey, I remember you. Uh, I got some recordings. <laughs> so Tristan, uh, once again, thank you very much for sending these treasures over and Beefcake. Apparently still such a kind person. Thank you, everybody. Uh, for you watching this, I hope you enjoyed our trip down memory lane. And um, yeah. Talk to you soon, everybody. Bye-bye.